It was a beautiful morning with virtually no wind forecast and we were going to set off from Falmouth and we were going to go round to Newland. I awaited the chap to come and fill us up with fuel because I wanted to top up to know that I'm sure that I've got plenty as there's no wind. When he arrived, I only could squeeze 15 litres in and that was my surprise because I thought we'd used the engine a bit. They had an automated filling station, but unfortunately it needed a man to operate it. You couldn't do it on your own. We set off down the river about 10 to 8 in the morning and there were signs of life in lots of different places. There was a hell of a lot of boats in for the old gaffers meeting. There's probably a lot of sore heads amongst that lot from the singing that went on last night and I'm sure it was accompanied by alcohol. Yet yeah, there's quite a piece in the river this morning. Notice this sign. As the sea dies, we die. I think it's fairly true myself. We should look after our planet a lot better than we do. Well, it's already feeling like it's going to be a hot one. T-shirts before eight o'clock and shorts. The land will warm up quickly. I hope the sea does as well. It would have been nice to have more time here, but needs must and I've got a lot of trekking I need to do. So off we pop, thinking we're going to Newland. We leave the mooring part from the boat and head to the industrial bit, which you leave to starboard and then you slip out into the main estuary. And there sits our border force, doing a grand job protecting our shores. There's some very modern properties on the way out and some very not so modern properties and then some really old properties. A, a mix of new and old. Well, as expected, we've got bin bags again. We knew we were motoring, but we can enjoy it because the sun's shining. We get some video footage for you guys. I don't know what it is about a bow. Whether it's sailing or motoring, it's still an exciting place. Just look at that water for flat. Sure, if you drop the pee in it, you could see the ripples go for a mile. We're just passing the Helford River estuary at the moment, just about here. We're heading towards uh, the Lizard round the bottom there, but first we've got this point here, which is the manacles to get past. That's uh, looking into the Helford River, and as you can see, there's a lot of moor moorings and boats there. This is the East Cardinal Boy for the Manacles. We're supposed to be the other side of it, to be protected from the rocks that you can't see in between us and the land. But there's a couple of hundred yards on the inside of it that are still quite safe, so rather than wasting a lot of time, go through the lobster pots and cut inside. This is us, you can see cutting inside where it's safe. The blue bit's the dangerous bit. This is the boy on the chart plotter, the East Cardinal boy, and you can see the wheel. what it's protecting it against is these rocks. That boat's flashing there because it's in close proximity to us and we could hit each other, but in real terms, we won't. On the real charts, this is it now. This is a paper chart and that's the East Cardinal boy and these are the rocks that it's guarding you from. So that's an electronic and a paper version and here's us passing the inside of the boy. After the manacles, but before the lizard, we come across a very large ship sitting at anchor. Seems to me a strange place to hang around, but obviously he has his own reasons. I know he's at anchor, not by seeing the chain at the front, but from the chart plotter. When I go on to it and I see the boat flashing red there and I press on it, it brings it up and then I press on that and go for information and it'll tell me if you look at the screen. It turns round and says that the boat is at anchor there, second from the top on the left, and its speed on the right-hand side over ground is 0.3 knots. That's the gentle movement as it sways. We're now starting the gentle turn to starboard around the Lizard, which is the southernmost tip of UK mainland. It's marked at its highest point with a lighthouse, so that it can warn sailors at night and also give you a good fixing point. There is a pink house up here and I have my own theory why it's pink. My theory goes like this. 
He used to tell his friends, that's my house on the top of the cliff. And they say, which one? And he'd say, the one on the right. And nobody'd know. So he painted the pink so that he could tell everybody, that's my house on the top of the cliff, the pink one. We're now in an area where there would be overfalls, should the weather permit. But today, because it's a flat calm, you've just got the disruption of the water, which is just a little bit of light waves underneath you. That's because there's no wind. There is tide, but there's no wind, so you don't get no wind over tide situation. See, so every cloud has a silver lining. Oh, a day without wind has got its bonuses. A large offing would have had to have been given to this area, even in a force four to five. I'm holding an easterly heading at the moment to clear the bottom of the headland. And while doing so, I notice a little bit of wind is falling in from the east, which wasn't um, forecast. A number of boats about me at the time all start to goose wing, so I goose wing as well, and we start a little sail. It was about now we made the decision, as it was such a nice day, that we won't go up to Newland. We'll just continue on this easterly heading and head off to the Silly Isles. We had plenty of company in other boats cruising that way and other ships cruising that way. I was a little mesmerised by the ship bow as it slowly dug in and slowly lifted back out of the long Atlantic wave. The sea state remained slight at all times on the crossing, so it was quite a good crossing. And we were carrying the tide for most of the way across as well, which always helps and keeps the speed over ground up. Our speed through the water is just over five knots, so we've got a fair lift from the tide. And the wind's on our quarter, so it's easy sailing. And you can see all those boats that were grouped up with that are sailing across at the same time as us. Quite a few. There's plenty of time to enjoy the fine sunny weather. Just got to make sure that you don't burn too much in it. As we get closer towards the sillies, the air lightens up and starts giving up on the sailing side. So Lisa takes this opportunity to do some washing and hang it out. These were our first glimpses of the Silly Isles as they came into view out the mist. They were quite hard to see until we were quite close to them. I'd have said we were probably only two to three miles when they started showing themselves. I think that's St Martin's, then Tresco there in the distance and then it comes into St Mary's here a little bit closer to us. So at the end of St Mary's there should be St Mary's Sound that opens up just here and that should be our entrance in. And that's St Agnes on the end down there. The first thing I'm on the lookout for is this Cardinal Boy. It's an East Cardinal Boy but it's actually a North East doing its job. And the reason it's not a northeast cardinal boy is because they don't have them. Once into the sound, on your starboard side, St Mary's has got an anchorage, a south facing anchorage, which is obviously good for anything with north in it. Opposite which is the cardinal boy, so at least we know we're on the right track now. From this point it takes minutes to get round to the main anchorage of St Mary's and once there we look down six meters and we can see the bottom we're quite lucky and we find ourselves with an empty can that we can pick up one of the visitors more and boys amongst many other boats who are here there's only one or two cans left and it's a lovely warm evening so I think we'll have our evening meal outside tonight in the sunshine which Lisa's lovingly prepared well, that was a nice way to end what was a very nice day. So we sit there and finish our drinks and we watch the sun go down until it disappears over the horizon. The next day, we go up to Hugh Town for a visit and we have a walk around the town and have a look at some of the views that it can offer and the special places, visit the cafes and the bars. It's still got quite an oldie world charm about it and something completely different than mainland UK. And that's not just the fact that the cars don't need any MOTs. That's our moorings there. And as you pan round, you can see island after island after island. They're not all inhabited, but they all do have dangerous rocks spread about them. 
So you do need your chart and even a chart plotter to fall back on and you need to plan your course carefully. Well that's all for this episode. Hope you've enjoyed it. See you again soon.